righty. Sorry to be a few minutes late. I <laughs> went completely brain dead on the password for this computer. I got too many passwords float around in my head, but figured it out and we are here. So <coughs> hopefully everybody has had a good last two weeks since I didn't do a show last week with it being Memorial Day weekend and also last Friday, Sarah had her wisdom teeth out. So that was loads of fun. So hopefully you all can hear me. Just let me make sure you can. Somebody let me know that you can hear me. You can. Okay, good. So yes, and Sarah is recovering from that. So um, crazy couple of weeks though. I swear I had everybody had doctors, dentists, mental health, etc. appointments. And so it's been a little bit crazy, but what else is new? That's pretty much my standard state of being. So anyway, um, I have decided that with the, um, the project that we were working on with the, um, the, the journal using the, um, uh, envelopes and such that I'm going to go ahead and finish that up <coughs> off camera, post a picture, and uh, we're just going to move on to, um, something new. So, um, um, and so this is something that I have had in my, my, um, idea book. <laughs> See, it says, this is my idea. That's the idea. So this is my idea book. Um, but I've had that in, this is like my 10th idea book, um, that I've had in there for, oh, several years now. Um, and this one's just a very tiny version. Um, I've been wanting to do buildings and such that hang on the wall after people were like, oh my goodness, I'm running out of shelf space with some of my other projects, I thought, well, we can start hanging them on the wall. So this is um, a variation of that, of doing what I call Wall Street, not Wall Street in terms of the financial, but Wall Street is that the buildings are on the wall. Um, so this is a, a kind of little miniature um, version of that that we're working on. And since I came up with this idea at about Oh, 1 30 this afternoon that, Oh, this is what we'd work on instead. I didn't get very far. I at least got the little buildings made. I also had to run out and get some frames. So, um, anyway, okay. Sorry. I had to stop to read for a second. To do this one, what you'll need is some sort of frame. Now, it can be pretty much any size that you want to work on. These two frames um, hold um, five by seven photos. You could do eight by 10. You can do larger. You could even do smaller if you wanted to do that. But I decided I'm just going to go for the five by seven. It makes a nice little size. So you can do it horizontally or you can do it vertically. These have, I accidentally set this on my floor and that was a big mistake. These things have like velvet stuff on the back and I have <laughs> lots of cat hair and um, scribble nibble jibbles off of my desk. So it was like, oh, that was a dumb move to make and I don't have a, a roller in here. Anyway, um, so you can do it either vertical or horizontal format with your little houses. But what we're going to do is we're going to be making little buildings. We're going to paint a background or you can use paper either way. I'm going to do these a little bit more artsy fartsy, but you can totally cover these with paper. Um, a good uh, place to look for reference is from, uh, I should have looked up what year it was from my wee village, but my wee village of little tiny houses was from, I want to say about 
13 or 14. Um, but you can go look at some of the stuff from that one. Gives you some ideas of what you could do on the face of these little um, little houses and stuff. Um, um, so, sorry, I keep stopping to read. And I can't read and talk at the same time quite as well. Um, yeah, so the with the Wee Village, you can kind of look at that as some ideas for like shapes of your houses and that sort of thing. Um, now, I did enough that it fit all the way across. I could also do it with um, having a gap. So probably on this one, I might do it with a gap because I might do this one. Um, these just fit though. And this one too. So it's like, hmm, it fits that way or adding an extra one. So I don't know. I might keep it to where they're tight and cozy in there, but you could also do it where it just had a couple of houses and then maybe you do a tree or something and I can show you how to do a tree. Um, but it can go either, either way. Um, and then they just fit right in here in the little picture frame and then you can hang this on the wall and we're going to decorate and embellish um, the little houses as well. So, um, and then this hangs on the wall. Um, now these are all the deepest one I have is five eighths of an inch. These two are half an inch. And then there's one that's three eighths of an inch. Now I've cut them all so that it has the depth pieces attached and you just fold them in. Um, these, this one I taped on the inside. It didn't work as well. And then I started just using some washi tape to tape on the outside because I'm going to paint over this or paper over it as the case may be, whichever you want to do, whether you want to do ones that are painted or ones that are papered. What I will do is we'll get started on this today and then we're going to go ahead and finish it up probably next week. So my goal for today is to get the, um, the houses constructed and then next week we'll embellish them. And in the week, ensuing week, I will finish one of them so that you can have a completed um, a project to, to, um, to see from that. But your houses may look like mine or they can be um, completely different because I'm just going to show you and it's really easy. It's, <coughs> um, excuse me, um, tiny amount of measuring, um, pretty easy to do. So now, as I just said, the buildings are not the same depth. This one, the shallowest one is three eighths. These two are half an inch deep. And the fattest one I have is at five eighths of an inch deep. So you can, um, you know, I've varied the depths on them to give it that depth look. So um, probably the deepest I would go maybe would be three quarters of an inch. So, um, but as I said, they can go either way. I'm going to do one, one way and one, the other. Um, I actually might do one large house with a tree on this one. So it's a little bit larger house, um, on this one. Um, that's the beauty of this is you can make the little houses and buildings any size um, that you want to. And it's pretty quick. I literally at one thirty, I said, Oh, cause I was, I was going to work on something else. We weren't going to work on, on the, um, thing that we'd been working on before the, the little book that we'd been working. I'd already decided we were going to do something different. So I was playing around with something else. And then I got the idea. Oh, as I was thumbing through my book, I went, Oh, wait, what if we started Wall Street? Because this is a whole series. I have a list of about seven or eight of these to do of buildings that hang on the wall. So I thought, well, let's just go ahead and start it. We'll do this first one as a complete freebie. So, um, cause I'm going to give you all the information for how to make all the little houses. So, um, so at about one then I'm running over to Hobby Lobby to get some frames and came home and I got all these little houses made. Had I had at least another hour, maybe two hours, I could have potentially had a sample pulled together that quickly. So it just depends on how much detail and how 
fussy and that kind of thing you want to get with doing your little, excuse me, your little building. So, but I'm going to show you how to make these little ones, but I may do this one, as I said, with a little bit larger building and you just do your little house and you can just change it. Um, you can make them any size that you want to make, but um, I think it's going to be a fun little project. It's a great way to use up maybe some old frames. As I said, I went ahead and bought these and they're half price right now at Happy Lobby. Um, so you can um, use old frames. Maybe you have some old frames around. Maybe you have some frames that the glass got broken out of because we're going to take the glass out. But hang on to the glass because I have a project coming up this summer as part of my summer camp series. Um, that you'll need the glass for. So hang on to the glass for that. Um, but you're going to just take um, everything out. I took everything out. This piece is attached on this frame, but it might not be. But I just took everything out. Um, and I'm actually going to put a piece of, of whether it's paper or lightweight chipboard or something over the top of this that I'm going to put either paper or paint onto. So, but I do want to do, get the sample made up and show you um, of how, how we're going to do all that. And that's something we'll work on um, the next week, but you'll be doing a background behind the houses and then we're making the little houses. Now I'm using some lightweight chipboard. Now on the lightweight chipboard, if you don't have any lightweight chipboard, um, do you have cereal boxes in your, your cabinet? Or uh, my favorite is because these are one of my weaknesses. So I keep my boxes, my Nello wafers, um, the chipboard, the, the cardboard these are made out of is like, this is like the perfect uh, weight of lightweight chipboard. So use packaging. So if you don't have lightweight chipboard, all of the packaging that food stuff comes in is about the right weight. Cart cereal boxes, Nilla wafer boxes, that sort of thing, um, work perfect for this. And you, because it doesn't, it isn't going to show, or you're going to, it's either not going to show, or you're going to cover it. So, um, but I used ha basically half a sheet to make. Um, these little houses. So let's start off with this one. This one has, um, yeah, this one has the deepest. This has a five eighths inch um, depth on it. And it is an inch and a half wide. And the sides are an inch and a half. So it's an inch and a half square with an inch tall um, little peaked roof on it. Pop-Tarts, Pop-Tart boxes will work as well, Alex. <laughs> so, all right. So if this one is, I'm going to, for ease, I'm going to make one with only a half inch depth. So you need a ruler. If you've got a Tim Holtz ruler or other ruler that's, you can see through You're otherwise you're going to have to mark it, but I'm going to mark along the bottom half an inch up because that's my depth. And along this side, I'm going to mark half an inch in. And that's going to give me my depth. Okay, so this is only an inch and a half wide. My ruler happens to be an inch and a half wide. So I'm going to lay my ruler, I can see it a little bit better, along the one line and draw over on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same just to mark the height since this one that I'm making is an inch and a half tall. So here I've got half an inch in, half an inch in to draw this line and this line. Can you see that? Catch it in the light just right there. Maybe you can see it now. So I've drawn the lines for my width and this is how deep it's gonna be. So I need another line over on this side
trying to draw a little. Maybe I just go over these and draw them a little darker so you can see a little bit better. And the 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 ones I just went over only go up that inch and a half. So I've marked my. Maybe you can see it better. There you go. Okay, so half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. Then this is the height before it goes up into the angle for the, the roof. And that's an inch up from those lines. So mark that. And it's halfway. So if this is an inch and a half wide, three-eighths and three-eighths to mark where that middle point is. And it's an inch up. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line from those points. And that's going to make the shape of my house. And then I'm going to draw a line half an inch away from that roof line. All right. So see how here's my two points and then that top point. So I drew from there and I drew from there. So that's going to be the front of my house. Then I've got lines or edges that are half an inch away from each of those points. All right. So I'm going to then mark where I have to notch it out. Okay. So I'm going to be cutting out this section down here at the bottom, those X's. And now to figure out the angle of this, what I want to do is be square to that. So I can use either my ruler, or if that's confusing, you can take something that's got a square corner on it, lay that on the, my roof line, and draw that angle. I'll show it to you here in just a sec. But using a square corner, I find this is a little bit easier for some people to kind of figure that kind of thing out for doing a square corner rather than using my, my ruler to do it. So I'm laying it at each of those points on that angled roof line. So this part that I have the X's in are the parts I will cut away. Erase that line in there. So it doesn't confuse you. Okay, so this is where I made this little square corner, square corner, and those four square corners so that I can cut away these parts. Does that make sense? So you're always going to have a square corner with a line. So this is a square corner, and here's my tabs, and they're going to be square to that line. If I turn it here for this roof line, these two lines are going to be square to that line. These two lines are going to be square to this line. These two are going to be square to this line. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, good. Okay, so then I'm going to cut it out. And you can cut it out with your scissors. I'm just cutting out with my scissors. I've lightened up a lot on all that stuff. I'm not quite as, like, it has to get cut with my craft knife. So... I'm just cutting it as carefully as I can on those lines. Okay, so it's cut out like so. You can see the half, whoops. There you can see the house inside, the half inch inside. Okay, so then at each of these corners, I'm gonna cut those out. So 
then it's going to look like this. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay, now I need to fold on those lines. And if you just run something on it, you, you can get your um, scoreboard out. But I just have a pokey tool thing. Not super sharp, but I'm just running it along the lines, those drawn lines. And that's just going to give it a place to fold on, a crease on. Otherwise, it's not necessarily going to have nice crisp creases. You'd even use a ballpoint pen along that to get it, to give it a line to crease on. So then we're just going to fold it at each of those crease lines. So that's going to make my little house that's half an inch deep. So this makes, does that make sense to everybody? And then all of these intersections should all line up and be just right. All right, so I'm just taking some, some uh, washi tape. And it's it, this is like 3 eighths of an inch wide. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue stick along those edges so that my washi tape doesn't come popping off before I have a chance to do anything else to it. <laughs> so I'm going to start it in the middle, run it around the edge. Now you can also do little bits of tape on the inside or little construction strips if you so choose. This is just quick and easy. I'm just running it around the outside. You can even just make little strips out of um, craft cardstock with score tape on it. This is flat to do the same sort of thing. Burnish it on, make sure everything's nice and smooth. So see how the tape's running around that edge? And it doesn't come all the way out to the edge. Um, but that gives me a little house. You know, because when I did the first, yeah, the first one, I didn't put a bottom on it and I was like, oops but I have these little pieces of tape on the inside. It doesn't seem to work as well. Just like I, you know, when it's skinny with the construction strips, I tend to put those on the outside because these little corners like this, it tends not to want to stick. So I'll probably run a strip of this on the outside for this one too. Um, this one has the little pieces of tape on the inside, but I'm going to reinforce that. Um, but that, that's how you make the little houses and then you can make them any size. So you could actually draw your little house on here, the shape you want it, and then <clears throat> making sure you allow some space for it um, along the bottom and the sides, draw the house, the shape you want, and then just add the depth that you want, whether you want it half an inch or five eighths of an inch or three eighths of an inch or three quarters of an inch, 
you have to add that on to all of the edges. So what, no matter what shape your house is, you need to add that on. So that's how you make any of these houses with a little pointed roof. Now this one's got a tall, skinnier roof. These have pretty close to the same roof. So it's, you know, you might, you might want to vary your roof just a little bit so it has some uniqueness to it. Now I did one that has a flat roof that angles, get it in the light right, see, so that angles back flat. Um, and I might put little dormers or something on that. So if you want one of these kind of roofs, that's like, you know, it's got the peak on the side and it's cut this way. So having that little flat roof, we're going to do the same sort of thing. Now this one, I did this one as two inches. So in order to fit them across, you need to figure out, this is the one place where you might need to do some math. I didn't do math. It just happened to work out that way. But um, the opening of this is like oh, six and five eighths. But so I have a two inch, an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, and an inch and three quarters. And those all fit in there. That eighth of an inch, always take off whatever dimension it is. Take about an eighth of an inch off and then divide that up. Um, if you want them to fit in there nice and tight, you'll need that little eighth of an inch for everybody to fit in there. So <coughs> anyway, to make this guy, which is two inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. So we're going to measure that first. And I did this one three eighths of an inch, but since I'm doing these a little bit different depths, like that one was five eighths and I did this one a half, let's make this one a five eighths. So it's a little bit easier angle for you guys to do. So I'm going to draw my lines along the bottom and the side at five eighths of an inch in so that's going to give me the one corner. And then it's two and a quarter inches tall for this one. Yours may be taller. You may decide to make yours a different height. And it's two inches wide. So I'm going to mark two inches wide in two different spots. I only marked an inch and a half. That way I can connect the lines. So mark that. That doesn't look right. Okay. So I've got my five eighths, my five eighths and my five eighths. And then I need to draw five eighths on this side because I'm doing this deeper. And then however tall I want my roof to be. Now I did an inch and a quarter. So let's do that same inch and a quarter. Now on the top of this one, I am not adding my depth to it. I don't need up here at this top edge. I don't need the five eighths. So I just need the five eighths on each side and at the bottom. So let me just cut that out so that you can see that easier without the rest of the cardboard there. Okay, so here's my bottom, my side, my side, and here's my roof. And here's the sides of my roof, but I need those to be at an angle. So I'm gonna cut draw a line from that point next to to the the top of the roof to this point out here which is at the top of my house so let's draw that okay. 
and do that on both sides. Okay, so I've done that. But then I still need to take a wedge out of here because when this folds over, there needs to be a wedge out of there. So I need a little section. So what I want to do is have this line here have a right angle or a squared angle from this point to this line. So I'm going to take, again, a square edge and have it go through that point. So my square corner is going to go through that point right there and line up with that line. See how that's doing that? So that part with the X in it is the part I'm going to remove. So again, over on this side, I'm going to line up my square corner. So I have a square corner and I'm going to lay it on that angled line. And so that the other side is going through the point with my roof. So this edge is lining up on the angle. This edge is going through that point. So then that little wedge is what I'm going to take out. Does that make sense? All right. So then I can cut that angle and that angle. And then I cut out these little wedges. And cut out these corners. And now I'm going to go and use my little tool. That actually gets to go all the way up. So now we fold up our bottom, our sides, our sides, the sides of our roof, and be careful up by that point. It actually folds. And I'm just going to fold this gently there. But we're going to bring everybody all together. And that's going to form. Now that came out a little short. It's nice and square, but it's a little short. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cut a little bit off of each of these. <laughs> so the depth, it worked out fine with this one. I'll have to, whoops, where is it at? I'll have to figure out the math of why that didn't come out. Right, the, that only came out to half an inch instead of five eighths. So if I had this come out, hmm, I'll have to figure out the math on that, and I'll let you know on that next week. But as it is. That came out half an inch deep. So I'm just going to make this guy half an inch deep. So I'll just trim this all down. I'll have to go through my geometry to figure that one out as to why that did that. Easy fix, though, because I just make the other. It's just not going to be as deep. Let's trim these guys all up to the depth of the roof, and we're good. No harm, no foul.
Now, when that folds over, that lines up perfect. So I think if I wanted that to be, so if I had done these three quarters of an inch out, that might've worked out. So anyway, it worked out. It worked out on this one, only three eighths of an inch. So half an inch, cutting it to five and then it becomes half inch works out fine. So I'm not gonna worry myself too much about it. All right, so. And this is a washi tape I don't use very often, so I have no problems using it for this. If it was one of my most favorite, maybe not so much. I didn't go through. Burnish that on. And then I can go through and trim this tape. So that gives me my little so you're seeing the slope of the roof rather than the peak. So that gives me those two houses. Now let's make another one. Maybe for this one, I'll just do three houses. So since that's, those are both kind of the same depth, I'm gonna do one that's, I'll, now I'll do a 5 8 inch one. So I like having that a little bit deeper. So five eighths. I'll go ahead and cut this off. I'll go five eighths on this side. And let's make this one. Well, one is two and one. Is, so we should make this a tall, skinny one. Maybe we'll make this one just one inch wide. Tall skinny one. I'm gonna catch it in the light right because I'm getting a glare. Okay. And then five eighths inch over from that. And Let's go all the way up as far as we can go, pretty much. Mark the center, and that's how tall I want it to be. And let's come here, go down. I'm doing two and a quarter. Match those, do my five eights. And then work my angles. Now I'm just using my ruler for my, my 90 degree line. Yeah, I'm gonna have to shorten it down because I'm running into I'm right I'm out of goodies there, so let me erase those lines. I didn't have enough chipboard there. So the lines that I drew at the angles are not proper lines because I need to make it a little shorter. So this guy's going to be 
that was three and a half. Let's go down to three and a quarter. So redraw my lines. And then do my five eighths depth from there. Okay, now I can get my 90 degrees in. Ninety degrees down here. And here. Ninety degrees are square. So there I'm gonna have a tall skinny house. Just making sense what I'm doing. All right, so it's going to look like that. So there we've got just a little tall skinny house with a little more depth. So let's go ahead and get him. Oops. I always want to take this end off and it's the other end on these glue sticks. And I'm lining my tape up with the outer edge. So there's my little tall skinny house. I can do. See, I didn't plan it, but these all just fit in there perfect. It's cozy, but they all fit in there. 
I'm not liking this guy with this, with this. I want something a little more vertical on here. This one, I, I like it better when it's with the horizontal. I want this one to be nice and tall over here. So maybe I'll do one that's nice and really tall. But I like this little skinny guy here. That look, he's cute. So maybe we'll do one more, but taller. So yeah, we can still squeeze some out of here. Um, since we get two halves and a five eighths, we'll do this one three eighths. I'm going to flip this over so I don't have all those pencil marks. So I'm going to go three eighths from the bottom. And three eighths. Let's go from this side since it's longer. Let's square that up a bit. It's not super square. Since I'm cutting with my scissors, it's not. I don't even have the craft knife out. Let's just square that up. Okay, so three eighths inch over from that edge. And square this side over here. So I'm not even measuring, I'm just whatever width I can get out of this. So three eighths. And it's two inches wide, so perfect. So slide up. And come down just a little bit. So there's my center point. And let's make it an inch and a half roof so I can mark that along there. And so from that point to my roof point, and that point to that other, and do my three eighths of an inch. Do my 90 degree at the same time. And on this side, three eighths of an inch out from that angle. Now, especially here up at this top, your inclination is want to go just run this line straight and cut it there. And it's you got to remember that it needs to be square to this line, not to this one. OK, so this should be a wider angle here, not a 90 degree angle up at the top. Cutting it on the proper. Now I'm gonna. Or, whoops. I want to erase that one going across there. All right. So that's what that one looks like. So now we're gonna go and score these for a fold. Thank you, Lois, for coming. I appreciate it. We'll see you next Friday. Oops, I forgot the corners. Now, 
The other thing that you can use if you don't want to use a frame, and I was thinking of this as I was on my way to Hobby Lobby, but you could also use a, a canvas, you know, and do a reverse canvas with these little houses in there as well. I'll grab one down in just a minute. I got a whole bunch. And um, so if you have some canvas around and you don't have an extra frame, you can use a, you can do a reverse canvas. I thought that one looked a little wide. This guy looks wider than the rest of them. So I think I just cut him a little wide. Yeah, he's a little bit wide. So let me trim him up. I didn't do a great job of eyeballing my three eighths. There. This that sliver. And so this will be this house. I do recommend you go ahead with your bone folder and crease in because these are narrow sides to this thing, they tend to want to bow out unless you um, give them a good crease. You guys just should keep count of how many times I try to pull off the twisty thing of my glue rather than the, uh, the end I should. These are little flat houses, so flats on Wall Street. <laughs> you know, I love playing on word with words. You can also make little chimneys or whatever kind of thing you want. See, this guy's too wide to go in there. See, now this this one's, I'm just, I like him in this setup. He's just too much the same depth. So this one, I may do this one this way and then maybe put a tree in here or... Do that one as a vertical and I could actually put like a sun or maybe do this one as a night scene and put a moon up there or something like that. Or maybe because this one has a dark frame. Well, they fit better in that. So do this one as a night scene with putting like a moon in there. Then they fit better in there. It's a little bit wider. So there we go. We've got so I showed you how to do that one. It's not my favorite, um, but so we've got one horizontal and one vertical. And then maybe I'll do another one that's got a little bit bigger house in it as well. Um, but let me grab down a, a um, frame thing. This is a big one, but it was the easiest one to pull out. But you could do it. You know, you can make a big village in something like this. 
um, I'd probably do something like this one horizontal, or you could even get a long skinny um, uh, canvas and do a whole bunch of them. But I think it would be super cute to do the houses. And, um, as a kind of a reverse canvas. This guy just seems to constantly want to be the odd man out. Maybe I have a little alleyway. <laughs> Is this one narrower? Still can't quite fit him in. But anyway, you could do with several houses, you know, across there. Or have a tree or something. <laughs> um, or just as a gap like it's another street. But so that would be also a fun way to go to make a little bit bigger village. With something like this, you could also do some taller ones as well. But it gives you some ideas of what you could do. Um, with these and where are we at on time oh, we still have an hour hmm. Hmm. oh yeah for the winter time oh my goodness we could you could do a little village for christmas you could have little snowflakes coming down and all that kind of stuff yeah i had um an idea for one to do um along it probably work really well on the canvas is doing some um, cotton up here at the top for clouds and have it look like little raindrops are dropping down um, from that. So there's just, you know, oh, there's just oodles and gobs. This one I need to tape it. He's just not hanging together. <laughs> Actually, I need to redo him because I didn't put a bottom on him. So maybe I'll make a whole nother house. I must admit, these are not my favorite, but I think having a, a flat looking roof one um, is still cute. So um, the other thing that I want to do with these is, especially on a larger one like this, is I would love to do like a cityscape and have, so they could all be just big rectangles. So they could be more... Um, Maybe have one pointy roofed one, but have a bunch of tall rectangles so that they have all sorts of levels of um, windows and stuff on them. So it's more of a city, an urban cityscape type of thing rather than um, just the little country little houses along here. So, all right. So we can either make more houses or we can start assembling one, but we've got like under an hour so which would you guys prefer to do i mean this would totally be fun to do the four seasons as somebody's suggestion is doing you know a spring a summer a winter a fall and you could totally seasonalize these you could make all sorts of different sizes the other thing i i could do is i can make a, a little bit larger house maybe put a tree Start a session. I knew that that was going to be what everybody wanted to do. Um, and now I'm going to be painting houses rather than papering. Um, but before we start really, well, I can work on one house and then I can, um, and then next class I'll show you how to do um, the background. So let's just decorate one house because I have to remake that one. So this guy I better remake let's go with this one he's a nice quick and easy one let's set all of these guys out of the way 
Now, as I said, you can either paint them or you can paper them, whichever is your preference. I'll do a sample one way and one um, the other way as well. So I'm going to start out with, I'm going to gesso. I'm just into painting stuff right now rather than doing the paper. Um, I'm having so much fun with the painting rather than papering everything. So, all right, so I'm just gonna gesso. And what gesso does is it gives you a base coat. It, it gives you, it's like a primer. And also, when you've done the tape on there, when you're going to paint, it gives some tooth to where that tape is. Um, that paint might not always stick to. See, I'm even going over the tape with the gesso because it's kind of waxy, so it keeps wanting to kind of... Not what I meant to do. So, let's just keep dropping it. It's giving me texture, right? All right. So we got this just one in there. Let's dry them a little bit. I had just been thinking about this color and I want a little pink in there. I don't know that kind of yellowy orange right now is very appealing to me. And then I want to kind of an off white. Okay, so then I can just paint them. Now you can just paint them a solid color. I'm gonna give them a little mix. So my base color is kind of this, I don't know, I'm just, I want this color for some reason right now. But I wanna mix some of that the white light in there and maybe some of the pink. I'm going to hold on to it up at the roof because I'm going to have it covered over on the roof line a little bit too. I'm kind of just mixing it on my piece, giving it a little bit lighter up at the top. I'm 
No, so he's got a little other color in there. So I like how that's kind of come out. Maybe I'll brush that in a little. There we go. So he's not super solid color, but you could totally do it that way if you want. Now, painted like this, now I could cut out the little windows or I can paint them on. But I do want, this is my, the color combo I'm into right now. I'm totally weirdly into this yellow, this kind of um, yellow orange and with blue, light blue. I don't know why, it's just the color I'm into right now. Maybe I like it better with that light. So I'm going to put a little blue door on it. But I could totally cut these pieces out. If you want. Oh, Sarah is doing quite well. He's healing up. All right, so I'm very pleased with how that color is. Now, I would, I do want, uh, I think I'll do a blue door and a blue roof. Now, the, out of the, the um, when I took the frames apart, you know, they had this, um, cardboard in there so I thought oh I'm gonna save that I'm gonna use it and it had the one had a cutout one of them was solid like this one had a cutout but it's like oh that works just gonna this is about the right depth I want it to be perfect see I want it a little bit deeper than my house so hold that at about right there See, that's going to go on my roof. Now, I, if I if I had space between them, I'd say then I could leave it overhanging like that. But because I don't have a lot of space, I'm going to cut off to the overhang. <laughs> so my roof's just going to come to the edge like so. So see how it overhangs slightly there. So my roof's going to overhang, but it's not going to extend out because I've got my all the little row of houses all together there. So I am going to do a real quick... Just so... On my little roof here. And just the overhang at the front mainly. And I want out those little cardboard cells to show, so that's why I'm stabbing it slightly. All right. So that's good with that.
Oh, it's perfect for using up little scraps. Totally can do this totally out of paper too. So I'll let that dry a little bit more. I'm gonna add some white detailing put stuff onto this one. Is my off white, so I'm just gonna paint it onto this little piece and then so I'm just giving it some. So all that did was give it a little bit of modeling on there. This was too like solid. <laughs> Maybe I'll take a little of my ink. This puppy's hot. Cool down. <laughs> So now I can paint my roof. So I don't get quite so much paint on my hands. Let me dry this a little bit and then before I flip it over. <laughs> wow, we lost half the people when I started painting. You guys just aren't wanting to paint. I'm totally into paint right now. So I'm sorry about that, guys. You can totally paper it if that's what you prefer. You know, to keep growing and, and stuff, you have to kind of try it, go in different directions sometimes. And it's not, I, and I totally get and understand that the direction I'm heading in is not going to be for everybody. And I'm okay with that. And I, you know, if that's not okay, I'm sorry, but you know, we all have to kind of grow and develop. And this is kind of where I'm at right now. Oh, it's yeah, no, I I shouldn't. I just I'll stay quiet. So see, I like that little blue on there. I think that looks so cute with that color. The one thing I will say is kind of going into this a little bit looser direction and a little more artsy has been um, 
mentally saving for me, so to speak. Um, it's It's been very helpful for me as I've kind of gone through a rough stretch. Um, this glue bottle is making me scream. It's been doing this. I clear it and it still does. I mean, I even took and washed it out to where it had nothing in it and it still plugs like this. So I think it may be time to say cyanara glue bottle. I'm ready for a new one. But I do know one thing is in paper crafting, the direction things are going are much more in the way I've been. Whoa, that is way too big. <laughs> Look at that big old blah, blah, blah. Is, um, it's moving much more in the direction I've been doing things um, than in the direction where I was. And I, I have to grow and move forward. And, and I understand that not everybody's going to want to go that way. And I have to be okay with that. So. All right. So I got my little roof glued on there. I mean, and the stuff that I'm doing, I mean, this, this, I realize people are like, oh my goodness, I've spent so much already. As I said, I'm working towards making things both using up what you have, or if you want to try new things like this, like this project, you can do it with paper or you can do it with paint, but you know, paints like these. You know, you can get them real cheap. You don't need a lot of colors, that sort of thing. And it's fun to try stuff that's new. So, and the beauty of what I'm trying to do is I'm not embracing, I'm trying to be less, it's got to be just right. It's got to be perfect. You know, less need for it to be perfect. So, okay, so I've got my little blue door on there. The other thing I use is I use, other than I have a couple of quality watercolor brushes, 90% of my brushes are cheapo ones because I've been known to leave my brushes sitting in my thing of water overnight or more than overnight. So, like, for three days. So I use cheap brushes. So instead of off white, I'm using white and I'm going to paint my little windows on there. But again, you can cut out little pieces of paper for your windows. Did the wrong paint. It's not quite as white. Probably should have used gesso for these because I'm gonna have to do a second coat. Because the pink is showing through.
So there I got my little windows painted on there. Let's try that. These could also be totally abstract if you wanted to do something like on the Wee Village that um, where those were not literal, literally looking like houses. And I'm just drawing on little details and obviously not perfect. But that's actually what gives it such fun character is it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be. But I find painting these is going to be easier than papering them because they are tiny. So there's my cute little house. And I'm gonna take I'm going to take and just put some little flowers. I'm into hot pinks as an accent right now. And I do it on the sides if the sides were going to show, but because the sides, these are kind of wedged all in there and they're not going to show, um, I'm not going to worry about doing the sides. I do need a little bit of green. Salem's right by my desk, curled up, but he's now taking a bath. So if you hear that, that's my cat taking a bath. So there we go. Now we've got our tiny little house. So then I'm gonna do my whole row of houses, but you could totally do this with little pieces of paper and then draw on the pieces of paper if you'd prefer. So you could cover it in paper and do those little squares with paper. 
and do that sort of thing. Yeah, I totally love having the imperfectness. I think it's makes fun. Fun little the fun little details that aren't perfect. So it's there we go. So even have my little doorknob. So then do a whole whole string of them in different colors. Oh, it's not that one. It's this guy. So I can do my whole row of houses. Now this guy can also have um, a roof I'll cut it the same the same width, but he can have a roof overhang so that it overhangs as well. And that gives him a little bit more character. I might also make um, some little dormers that go on the roof. And I think that'll make that guy super, super duper cute. But I think doing that little row of houses and I think putting them in the little frame, I think is just adds kind of the the you know the look so like this one could be a little bit more shabby now if i did the the same houses in this frame kind of gives a slightly different look to it so you know it's a little bit more of a cleaner looking frame so it all depends on what kind of look that you want to go for you know because then we could also put it in canvas then it just depends on what we do around the frame edge you know as we put in even more houses you know so you can do a whole big long string from it can be all sorts of different themes uh, I also am thinking on a bigger thing like this we could also raise these up have a line here you could even do like a beach scene and have this be um, like it's on a dock and you could have like even a little boat or something sitting here or my original thought was this one I think I was thinking having some of these be a little bit taller so pretend these all extend all the way all the way down um, and doing a little bit taller but then having some greenery and flowers and stuff like that. So without having a sample completely finished to show you, but I, I'm having so much fun with this. I'm probably going to keep playing with this. And by Friday, I probably will have at least a couple samples um, completed to show you. Um, you could even do um, an even smaller frame with just maybe a house or two. Um, Whoa. I mean, this is, this is it. This thing is dusty. This is a, a tiny little frame. It's, but you could do a, just a couple of houses, like even just one house. I, I wouldn't put a dead center, but off the center. And then I could put a bunch of little flowers and stuff. So it'd be like a kind of a garden type house, or maybe this one would have two houses and then a bunch of flowers, even some mushrooms or something, if you wanted it to be more of a, fairy type house so you can do it tiny but this would be fun to do as like a housewarming gift or um you know christmas time um another thing is as as we're able to be getting together more with our friends and family putting together something you know where we're fun we're we're getting to come together 
um, again, it's, it might make a fun gift for someone. Um, you know, our houses are, we're all starting to gather together again. So. But yeah, I'm going to play with this a whole lot more this week, um, this weekend. I've got so much to do, but my brain is on this right now. And I think this is super fun, super easy, quick, as you saw how quickly this, the little house um, went together. And there's so many things. Um, I'm just in, trying to think. Of, I could, you could use just like a little dowel with, um, a bead even or those half beads you know they're they're it's like a half dome and that could be with a dowel coming down from it or a straw even um and that could be a cute little tree and you paint the the um or you can even get the little styrofoam balls that are half domes um and you could that would even be cute to do where you put little moss on it or something like that to make the tree um <laughs> that, that really my brain is just exploding with all sorts of ideas um, of things of what we could do. You could even do one, a little bit larger house you could have on the background. You could have some sort of a poem. Um, you can embellish the frame. There's just any number of things that you could do. And here's a tiny little a tiny uh, uh, canvas, you know. So here, you can embellish the outside of this frame. Put the little house in there. Maybe have some just some little flowers or something greenery in here. Um, super cute, super easy. Tiny little guy. How fun would that be? So um, yeah, no, I'm excited. I want to play with this some more. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and it doesn't require a lot. Chances are you might have an old frame in your house. You might have an old can uh, a canvas that you're not using. Um, again, you can use cereal boxes to make your little house out of inexpensive acrylic paint and um, uh, some sort of marking pen to mark it up and you can make, you know, Christmas, spring, fairy, Halloween. We know Alexa is going to do Halloween. Um, there's just a squillion and two things um, and options and things that you could do. Um, just totally go crazy and have fun. Um, I think that's always since, you know, I started doing this, I think that's always, always been where I'm coming from is I want to spark you to play and create. Um, and if it helps by me showing you a way to do that, and then you take it and go from there, um, that that's why I do this is I I want you to kind of find um you know find your own little voice in this that was too tall <laughs> that guy fits in there just perfectly so um you could put a little fence across you know this guy could go centered you put a little greenery back behind and you could have because he's just a little bit not quite as deep as the frame. So you could have a fence where it's just open in the center and a little fence going across um, from side to side. So, so hopefully this sparks a few ideas. It gets kind of your juices, your creative juices flowing. And it's something you can play with um, this weekend. Cause as I said, it's what I'm planning to put a little bit of time in um, this weekend and get some of these samples done. Cause this is, this is coming out even more fun than I was kind of anticipating. Now, some of the other things I have planned in, um, in this wall street series is some larger, larger buildings and that sort of thing, but they're all going to, the reason I'm calling it wall street is because they are buildings and such that can hang on the wall. You know, they may be, some of them may be tiny like this. 
Some of them may be larger. Some may have even albums or journal books types in them. So they'll have books in them. That's what I'm going to call them from here on out. Not albums and not journals, but books. Um, because moving forward with the journaling kind of stuff and things that I want to do, um, you can do in the in these books, you can do journaling, which can be writing. You can do art journaling. So you can put some, you know, your own art stuff in them. They can be for quotes and sayings. But more than anything, they can also be for um, photographs. So maybe what rather than calling them photo albums or journals, I may just call them memory books. Um, because memories, recording memories can be in, be in any number of ways, whether it's in written or photographs or artistic interpretations. Um, but it records a moment in time. So that's kind of where my direction is moving. So um, the other thing that um, I am going to be doing moving into the future is I am loving actually the creating the books. It lets me kind of escape into my own little world, not necessarily talking while I'm doing it. So I am going to be doing some of the books. Did, I don't know if I showed you. I may have showed this the last time. I'm, it, it's it's hard to remember what I'll... Um, for instance, this is one of the kind of journaling books I've barely started. I've got my um, stuff in there. But I'm going to be selling my actual... Um, these, these memory books. Um, I'm going to actually... I'm going to have a class... This summer, one of my summer classes is going to be putting together your own um, um, book. Um, and this one's totally using stuff from my stash. Some of it is ancient. Um, but I'm actually going to be selling these books. So there's going to be blank stuff in there for you can do your own journaling. You can do your own art. But I will be adding stuff in there. So I'm going to be selling completed books of these and this is using an actual this is an, a vintage book um and so i'm going to be selling actually my journals um i'll teach how to do it but i'm also going to be selling the actual finished journals as well so um that's in the works and such but but um anyway having tons of fun um, doing all this kind of stuff. So anyway, but this was a blast tonight. Um, we're done a little bit early, but we don't have enough time to start something else. So, um, let me just smooth my paint out so that it'll dry. So anyway, so it's been, this was fun tonight and I hope, um, I hope it's inspired some of you to, to go ahead and play with some of this and have some fun yourself. And as I said, I am going to keep on working. Um, again, you can make these things, these little houses, any size that you want. You can make them as deep as you want as well. Even if it pops out of the depth from the frame, that's totally fine. Um, but Variation of size, width, and that is going to give you um, the most visual interest in a row of them um, in the frame. So um, I think it's the sky is basically the limit. You can do whatever you want with these and turn it into your own um, your own little street, your own little Wall Street. And it doesn't take up, you know, depending on the size frame, it doesn't take up a lot of space and you can just hang it on the wall or gift it is another fun thing to do. So it's kind of 3D, kind of not. So as I said, pulling from the past with my little wee village, um, at the, as I posted, you know, over in paper doodles, you know, it's kind of pulling out of the past but giving it kind of a fresh, different look for me. So um, you can turn it into something totally your own.
All righty, guys. So I am going to let you go. And um, so we will be back again next Friday where we'll work on putting together our background and putting these into the frame. So I'm going to, in time for class, I'll have some more of the houses done. I'll probably leave at least one house to finish. And then we'll put our houses, we'll do the background and we'll put our houses um, into the frame and add some other embellishments and that sort of thing. Um, and I'll probably have some samples to show you um, after that. So, but as Alexa is just saying, everybody have a happy and safe weekend and we will see you then next Friday. So thank you as always to Joy. I always appreciate um, your help as um, moderating for me. Also to Lois when she comes back on to watch. So um, I'll make one of the houses blue for you, Lois. So um, again, I appreciate all that you guys all do in taking time out of your day and, and joining me here in my studio. And I look forward to seeing you next week. So love y'all bunches. Bye for now.